Praise the Lord. If you don't mind, we'll stand up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our session of Bible teaching at this time. Thank you for the way you began with us yesterday. And thank you, Lord, because of your grace, your love, your mercy, your compassion. Thank you because we know we have tasted of that love already. And we know that we are going to receive abundance of your love and mercy and grace more and more. And we are praying, O oh Lord, none of us will miss your blessings in Jesus' name. As you have called us to yourself. Lord, we pray you'll build a great relationship with every one of us in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that relationship will be functional. And it will bring a lot of glorious blessings to every one of our lives. We pray, oh Lord, at this time you'll touch every life. Wake us up that we will be able to see and know what you have for every one of us. Bless your people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And you give me another amen before you sit down. Amen. Thank you. God bless you very much. We're looking at the message, a foundation of great relationships. A foundation of great relationships. As you think about that word, relationship, a great word, a word that you need to think about, you need to learn a lot about it. And we're looking at the very foundation of that relationship. And we ought to also be thinking about the function of that relationship, the fellowship that comes as a result of that relationship and the fruit of that relationship. Relationship has a foundation. And when we're in relationship together, there is a function. And when we're in relationship together, we're in fellowship together. And actually, that relationship bear fruit. In fact, we can say that our destiny depends on relationship. You think about Adam and Eve. How God will come down at the cool of the day and fellowship with them because there was a relationship. You think about Abraham the friend of God. And you're thinking about relationship. You think about David. I have found a man that will do, that will fulfill all my will. You're thinking about relationship. The God man relationship. And then you think about us man to man, us man to wife. Parents to children, and neighbor to neighbor, and you're thinking about relationship as well. And remember once again, that relationship, it starts with something, and it has a basis, it has a foundation, and then there is fellowship inside that relationship, there's functionality. In that relationship, there is a fruit that that relationship will bring forth. And as you think about relationship between God and man, between man and his neighbor, that relationship will end in something. That means that destiny itself, the destiny of man, Depends on that relationship. When the relationship broke down between God and Adam and Eve, you know what happened? They were driven out of the Garden of Eden. 
when the relationship broke down between God and Saul. The Saul of the Old Testament. You know what happened? The kingdom was taken away from him. But when David established that relationship and continued in the fellowship that that relationship demanded, then his kingdom continued. Relationship, the foundation of great relationships. We're looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. That's the relationship. Now we are. So, therefore, the world knoweth us not. And then it says, because it knew him not. God has relationship with us. The world doesn't have relationship with God. Beloved, in verse 2, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's relationship. We become children of God, sons and daughters of God. That's relationship. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 14, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What's that? Relationship. He is Father. We are sons. And then He gives us a spirit. And because of our relationship, and to make that relationship to function, it gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit keeps on leading us, guiding us, instructing us, helping us to take the right decision every time. For many, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That word Abba is, is another word for Father. It's like slain daddy. That's like we have relationship, fellowship. And that relationship actually earns us something. In verse 16, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. It's just reminding us of this great relationship that we have with the Almighty God. And you know, we have relationship with Christ as well. John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, verse 13, greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. We are children of God. We are sons and daughters of God. Yes, we are disciples of Christ. Yes, we are friends of Christ. Greater love. As no man that thinks that a man should lay down his very life. For his friends, then he tells us how that 
friendship functions. How it continues. How it is established. How it becomes profitable. Look at verse 14. Hear my prayers. If you do whatsoever, I command you. In verse 15, henceforth, I call you not servants. But the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father. I have made known unto you. You see that relationship and you see what it brings forth, the fruit of it. Making himself, his mind, his heart, his will known unto us. Putting all this knowledge at our disposal. He says, because you are not servants and you have become friends of mine. Everything I've heard of my father, that I have revealed unto you. Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 15. For whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, whosoever shall do the will of my father, which means then, uh, the, uh, the, 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 what we're talking about, the relationship has some pillars, supporting pillars, a foundation that holds the fellowship of the relationship. It's not just, you know, a blanket, a net that is thrown out into the world. Relationship, relationship. Oh, there are many people on your streets you don't have any relationship with. There are many people in your city you don't have any relationship with. There are many people in your community you don't have relationship with. There is a foundation. There is a basis. There is a pillar that holds as an attachment. There is something, a link, something linking you together that makes you to have that fellowship and relationship and then Jesus said whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and my sister and my mother and so then we see it's very important we establish a relationship with the almighty God a great relationship is very important. We have a functional, functioning relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you become a friend of His, a brother, a sister to the Lord. As we look at this foundation of great relationships, we're going to talk about three things. Number one, the prize. The prize. Number two, the promise. Number three, the plan. Number one, the price of reconciliation. The price of reconciliation. If there is going to be relationship, there must be a reconciliation between man and God, between God and man. Since the time of Adam, and since the fall of man, man had gone far away from the Lord. We have turned our backs against the Lord. And now, if we're going to turn around and now have a relationship with this Almighty God, there must be a reconciliation, and somebody has to pay the price. For that reconciliation. Number one, the price of reconciliation with God in Christ. The price of reconciliation with God in Christ. Number two, you know sometimes we've got relationship and the, the devil is not happy that we have broken our relationship with him. He was our father. 
He was our controller. He was our inspirer. He was the one inspiring us to do whatever we did before we knew Christ. But now we said, get away from my life, Satan. I'm going to build a relationship with Christ. And then we went on in this wonderful fruit-producing relationship with Christ. And the devil became jealous. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sit you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, striving thy brethren, the devil was jealous. Of the relationship that Jesus had with Peter, that Peter had with Christ. He won't tell him. And sometimes it happens like that. We'll be going on with the Lord. And then the devil has been watching us. Our fellowship, our relationship, our commitment to the Lord. And then he turns around and makes us go away from the Lord. But then you have point number two, the promise of, re of restoration. The promise of restoration to God through Christ. The promise of restoration. You know the story of Peter. And you know how the Lord rescued him again. The promise of restoration to God through Christ. Number three. The plan, the plan of reunion with God's children. The plan of reunion with God's children. After we are reconciled to God, after we are restored to God, we're not in isolation, we're the family of God, we're the body of Christ. And because of that family, because of that body, there must be a reunion with God's children. The plan of reunion with God's children. Number one. What's number one? I just wanted to know whether you are taking notes. Good, good students. You are taking notes. God bless you. We're looking at the price of reconciliation with God in Christ. I want to tell you that Jesus paid the price. Wonderful Jesus. So that you will be reconciled with God. And so that the enmity and the wall of partition between you and Christ and God will be broken down. So that there will be no hindrance at all. There will be no blockage at all. There will be no roadblock. There will be no barrier. You come to God and you come through Christ. Because Christ paid it all. The price. The price of reconciliation with God in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who, were, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You are far away. But now, Christ, because of the price he paid, you are brought near unto the Lord. Then he tells us in verse 14, for he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Because of the price he paid, because of the death he died, because of the blood he shed, because of the penalty that already should belong to us that have been put on him, and because your guilt, your condemnation,